The following is a selected video from masterthecontent.com where you will find an extensive video library of lectures for a variety of standardized admission tests. We offer over 600 hours of detailed video lectures for a multitude of standardized tests. Use our interactive in-lecture table of contents to find specific topics of interest. Work through numerous in-lecture examples to help you internalize concepts. To learn more, visit masterthecontent.com. Your career, our passion. Conservative and non-conservative forces. We'll commence with a few definitions. Conservative force is a force with the property that the work done in moving an object between two points is independent of the path taken. For example, gravity, elastic, and electric forces are all examples of conservative forces. You can consider conservative forces the type of for, uh, interaction forces where they store useful energy. Now, a non-conservative force, in contrast, is a force with the property that the work then in moving an object between two points is dependent of the path taken. Now, for example, when two objects interact through frictional force, in that type of scenario, that energy is not being stored. Okay, wonderful. Let's actually move, proceed now to our next slide where we'll do a few examples of this to further elucidate our point. Example, conservative forces and non-conservative forces. Great. Identify the forces in the examples given below as either a conservative or non-conservative force. Now in part A, in figure 6.7 part A, the work done by the force of gravity as the book is displaced from position one to position two. So here is our scenario here and we have a book that's being displaced from position one to position two and we are taking a look at the work done by the force of work done by the force of gravity so the oh, I can write that a little neater for us so the work done by the force of gravity now whatever trajectory this book does, takes to get to position two whether it goes that way or if it goes that way Right? The work done by the force of gravity is actually dependent upon the vertical displacement as such, right? Thus, in both, in both scenarios, right, the work done by gravity right, is going to be identical whether it takes this trajectory or it takes this trajectory. Thus, we can say then that in this scenario here, that the force of uh, the force of gravity we found is a conservative force right and if we just go back one slide that is consistent with what we had stated right is independent of the path taken and that's what we see here that the force of gravity is independent of the path taken Wonderful. Now, if we move to part B, it's saying to us in figure 6.7 part B, the work done by the force of an ideal spring that is compressed and allowed to return to equilibrium. So now we're talking about the work done by the force of an ideal spring. And if we recall, an ideal spring is one that is massless, frictionless, and obeys Hooke's law. And work done by an ideal spring. So say we have a scenario where our spring, let me just get my pointer here, our spring is compressed to some point here and we'll just call that position x1 and then it comes back to its equilibrium position there and it comes straight back to the equilibrium position as such and it does not oscillate. If, if it takes that path or if it takes the path where it does oscillate back and forth and then comes to the equilibrium position, either way, the work done is actually independent, but the work done by the force of an ideal spring is actually independent of the path taken, whether it's straight there or if it oscillates back and forth. That's what we're demonstrating here. Thus, this work, thus the work done here, it too is a, uh, sorry, the force here, it too is a, the force of an ideal spring, it, it too is a conservative force. And that's what I just put a C there and circled it just to demonstrate it's a conservative force. Great, now let's take a look at part C. In figure 6.7 part C, the work done by kinetic friction as an object is displaced from position one to position two. Wonderful, and now we're talking about the work done by kinetic friction, right? So we just work done by kinetic friction in this scenario. So say 
say there's two different paths that it can take. It can take path one, our object, or it can take path two, this loopy path. And we'll consider this, we'll, sorry, we'll consider this here to be a bird's eye view. Now, the work, that the kinetic friction, right, if it takes path one or if it takes path two, because this path is longer, the work done along path two by kinetic friction is actually going to be more as opposed to the work done along path one. Thus, we can say then that the that kinetic friction is dependent on the path taken. Thus, this is a non-conservative force. And if you just think about the, the, the word conserve, and conserve means to hold constant, right? So this force here is not, is, uh, we can consider this to be a non-conservative force. Okay, great. So now what we can do is move on to our next slide and we'll take a look at law of conservation of energy.